Each week, individuals throughout the entertainment industry tell their stories of how they began working in Hollywood. These individuals range from those just starting out to those who have been in the game for years. This week, I had the honor and pleasure of sitting down with Ozzy Minakaya. Ozzy is on his way of becoming a household name that everyone won't forget. He's what I call a media tycoon. You are an assistant in Hollywood. How did you get here? I'm definitely an assistant in Hollywood. Uh, um, I moved out here from D.C. Um, after watching, I guess, a show called Entourage and realizing that this side of the industry existed. Okay. You know, uh, I, I always knew about scripts and agents, but I didn't necessarily know that um, uh, about the Hollywood s studio system mm -hmm. in general. Um, so I, I, I actually read this book called The Hollywood History from the Mailroom Up by, I believe, David Reinstein. Mm -hmm. um, and that, it, it encouraged me because it, it revealed to me that um, you didn't necessarily need like a, um, a college degree, actually, that anyone can make it if you believe in yourself strongly and if you have the tenacity uh, to engage and, and eventually make it. So I moved out, I, I, I canvassed the, the town, I guess, um, and I found out that most of the executives and a lot of the agents that work in, the, that work in Hollywood go to the Sunset Strip for, you know, for happy hour. So I ended up uh, trying to find a job at this place called Rock and Rallies and the Roxy as a bouncer. Both of those places hired me and I worked there for some time until I met a studio executive who agreed to interview me and eventually uh, connect me to HR at one of the agencies. So what inspired you? I know you said that reading up and watching the Entourage inspired you, but like, what was your deepest inspiration of like taking that, taking that leap and coming? <sighs> Truth telling, you know, and to, to me, storytelling uh, is a way to actually uh, derive truth. Mm -hmm. um, when I was younger, my parents actually um, took me and my family to, to live in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria House is one of the strongest film markets uh, in the world, or uh, one of the strongest film industries. They, they produce more content than any other film, uh, I guess, entity in the world. So there's a very strong film watching culture in Nigeria. Um, growing up in the States, uh, my parents more so, I guess, kept me sheltered. I wasn't allowed to go to the theaters here. Uh, TV watching was heavily restricted. But then once I landed in Nigeria at the age of 14, the influx of film uh, hit me strongly. You know, I could watch in, in, like, African films, but I could watch American films as well. Um, and so then that's where that love, like the, the, the love for film came. Then once I came back to America, I, I began to understand the influence of, of these pictures. Um, so once I graduated college, I knew that there was only one place for me to go, uh, and now I'm here. Just a little step back, what films specifically inspired you? Okay, so there was this one film, um, there was one film called John Q. Okay. It was directed by Nick Cassavetes, mm -hmm. um, starring Denzel Washington. Of course. Um, it, it, the film pits this one guy uh, in this terrible situation because his son has, uh, his son needs a new heart. Uh, I guess your heart is a vital organ. <laughs> you, you know, you really need it in order to live. And his son needed a heart transplant. Um, but the family didn't have the insurance nor did they have the finances to, you know, for, uh, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So the, the father actually goes out, uh, John Q goes out and does something, I guess commits a few crimes in order to, in, 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 in order to make sure that his son lived. When I first watched that film at the age of 15, um, it hit me hard. Because I was like, you know, can, can, is it possible for someone to go about doing something wrong in order for them to enact, uh, I guess, the, the correct situation? So that, that, that film did um, have a very strong impact on me. Fast forwarding, after working at Roxy, after bouncing and everything like that, you're in, a, in, you're in the agency. What's your job consist of? What does your job look like? Okay, um, I remember being so nervous. Okay. You know, uh, I'm brand new into the industry. I'm working at one of the top agencies in the world. Okay. Um, and I'm extremely intimidated. Um, I, I walk into the agency and uh, everyone's dressed to the nines. Everyone, I feel like, just had a meeting with who knows what di um, director, who knows what actor, and I'm just like, to me, coming off the streets, trying to be like, hey, can I work here? Um, I started off as a floater, okay. so my job was to um, assist the agent of whatever um, assistant like took off that day. Okay. So if there was an agent in, in motion picture talent mm -hmm. whose assistant called in sick, 
I would sit on that guy's desk and pretend to be his assistant for that day. So basically a temp. Yeah, basically a temp. Basically a temp, um, okay. And that, it, well, the pressures of being a temp are, are, are very high because um, they want you to be their assistant for that day, but you don't know any of their business, you don't know any of their clients, you don't know who they're supposed to call, you don't know who they, who they left voicemails for the, the day prior. So you just sit down and you want to just, <laughs> and you just try your best to keep that agent or keep that executive um, to keep them happy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, so I started off doing that. Um, a lot of the a lot of the job requirements or, or a, a lot of the things that a floater or a temp does, um, I guess, would be you, you answer the phone, you take notes on the calls, um, you send out you send out emails, you try to record everything that you did, so that once the assistant comes back the next day. Uh, they can easily they look exactly at they're exactly. Going. They know exactly they know where exactly. they're at. Yeah. yeah, they're not like, oh, I left this desk thing. They don't do nothing. <laughs> exactly. This thing went up in flames. <laughs> like, what happened? So you went from working as a floater to your first desk. What was that feeling? How did you do that? What was the ultimate like? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Ah, uh, it was a great feeling. I, I I wish I remember the one this one song. That one of my good friends, um, Pedro, he's now back in Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, played for me once I once I got on a once I got on a desk. But it's really hard to um, get on a desk in the department that you want to work for because uh, there are so, only so many desks and everything is highly competitive. Um, but I was able to uh, get on a desk in Motion Picture Talent, which was the, which was uh, the department that I wanted to get into, wow. and it was for uh, like a very high level, high powered agent. Mm -hmm. um, so there was definitely a celebration mm -hmm. uh, um, the day that I got, I guess, the, the, the day that I got that assignment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's more so, it's, it's, it's pretty great because you now, you're now one-on-one. -on -one. Although you work at an agency, you don't work for the agency, you work for that one particular agent. Mm -hmm. And you begin to build a relationship with that one person. Mm -hmm. um, because of the age difference between uh, myself and my boss, which was about you know, uh, 50 or 55 years, wow. there was a lot for me to learn, mm -hmm. but I felt like I gained, I definitely gained a mentor um, in my boss, because there was no sense of like competition. He, he didn't, there was nothing about me that, mm -hmm. that, that riled him up, mm -hmm. you know, um, because, because he was so elevated. Yeah, there was definitely um, things about my work that would make him happy or unhappy, but he looked at me just as another person trying to come up within the industry, and he definitely took me underneath his wing. Mm -hmm. um, and for my for that to happen on my first desk, uh, I felt like that was just a blessing that you know I got to be thankful for. That's great. That's yeah. great. Now, fast forward to today. Yeah. Um. Are you on that same desk? Oh, uh, okay. So I have now been at this agency for about four years. Wow. Um, a little over four years. Congrats. Now. Thank you. Congrats. I'm not on the same desk at all. Okay. Um, you do progress if you do well. Mm -hmm. And I was able to move off of that first desk. I, I did stay there and work for um, that legendary agent for two years. Um, but then now I work in the film finance department or film finance division where um, we serve our clients by financing and find, finding distribution for films outside of the studio system. Okay. So that's what I'm doing now. Transitioning from you as an assistant to your future, what does that look like? What do you imagine yourself being or doing in the future? Oh man, what a, what a great question. I think my future is going to be great. Okay. Um, I've worked really hard and I do see all of the pieces that I've been uh, positioning uh, coming together for something beautiful. Um, I feel like I, I've been trained in motion picture talent mm -hmm. in, 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 in lit in marketing mm -hmm. and in financing of films. So um, I feel like I'll be able to use all my talents uh, to definitely service an array of clients. Uh, I, I want to be international along with, uh, along with domestic. Um, and with, with the conglomeration of film and media as we see it today, I feel like someone with um, my attributes is going to be heavily needed. Mm -hmm. And in today's industry, um, diversity is a big thing, mm -hmm. but there are not a lot of players on the studio or agent side that are diverse. And so I want to lead that charge. And in the future, I feel like uh, someone like myself is going to be heavily needed mm -hmm. and readily relevant. 
So uh, I'm excited. So you're gonna like be like, Brittany, I just answered this question, but do you see yourself as an agent or an executive? Um, Cause I know that you wanna make an impact and you do wanna come strong within the film, within the talent department, but how do you see yourself? Like, what do you see yourself being? Or who do you see yourself being? Is that an agent? Is that an executive? What is it? Right. Um, I definitely see myself in the future as being an agent. Okay. But um, the word mogul comes to mind because. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> because I feel like uh, I feel like my dreams or your anyone's dreams should always be bigger than they can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, go big. Don't go home. Yeah. You know. Um, I feel like I, I, I want to play around in a lot of different areas. Mm -hmm. You know, even politics. You know, and so why restrict myself to one singular attribute? agent, executive, this, that, or the other, mm -hmm. when I know that I have the ability to do a lot or to do it all. Mm -hmm. Maybe people in the past haven't done it all mm -hmm. or done a lot, mm -hmm. but I dare to invent the future. Awesome. If you could go back in time, after being an assistant, after being a floater, after being a bouncer, after all these things that you have done thus far to get where you are today, to being an assistant within Hollywood, like in Hollywood, everybody wants to do that. What would you tell your younger self? Whether that be in college, whether that be that young boy watching those films, being inspired by John Q and Denzel, what would you tell your younger self? I love this question. I, I, I feel like it's even empowering me uh, as I am today, okay. just thinking about how I'm going to answer it. Um, but what I would tell my younger self would be to not listen to what other people are telling me. Believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. What do like Ozzy? What do you want to do? Keep at it. Trust in yourself. Move forward. You're gonna get it. That is the only thing that I would tell myself. Um, tell my younger self because everything else is irrelevant. Um, but girl, you know, of course, but when you're young, you, you're unsure of the future. You don't trust yourself. You trust other people that are older, that have been through things. But those people are usually scarred, and, 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 and they're going to try to put off their fears on you. No. What I would tell myself in college, or tell myself that, that that would be in high school today, would be those dreams that you have in your head, everything that you're telling yourself, you're correct. Move forward on them. Forget everybody else. And can I tell you what I love about that? What? You can still tell yourself that today. And that's and and when you, you were asking that question. Yes. Being an assistant, you still have more steps to go. You still have more things to accomplish. You still, you're not at the end of your route. You're not at the end of your journey. Your journey is just beginning. Right. So right. that advice right there that you would tell your younger self is what you can tell yourself today. today so I tomorrow. appreciate that. I love that. Great question. Um. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today oh, and telling me your journey, letting me know how you got here, letting me know your struggles, your It's been my everything. pleasure. It's been my pleasure. Yes, thank you.